Give me leave to have prerogative, and when in music we spend an hour on your lesson, shall have leisure as for much. Preposterous ass! Give me leave to teach her of womanly things in the kitchen, as it should be, and while I pause, serve in your harmony. Why, gentlemen, you do me double wrong to strive for that which resteth in my choice. Take you your instrument, play you whiles his lessons will be done ere you have tuned. You'll leave his lesson when I'm in tune. That will be never. Tune your piano. Where left we last? Here, madame. One package of lime jello, one cup of hot water, three and a half cup cold water, two tablespoons of vinegar, one tablespoon grated onion, one cup cottage cheese, one tablespoon mayonnaise, seafood for garnish. Slower, please. One package of lime jello, as I told you before, one cup of hot water, I am Lucentio. Three and a half cups of cold water, Santu Vigentio of Pisa. Two tablespoons of vinegar, disguised thus to get your love. One tablespoon grated onion, and that Lucentio that come a wooing. One cup cottage cheese is my man Tranio. One tablespoon mayonnaise, bearing my port. Seafood for garnish, that we might beguile the old pantaloon. Now let me see if I remember. One package of lime jello, one cup of hot water, I know you not, three fourths cup of cold water, two tablespoons of vinegar, I trust you not, one teaspoon of grated onion, one cup of cottage cheese, take heed, hear us not, one tablespoon of mayonnaise, presume not, seafood for garnish, despair not. In time, I may believe, Yet, I mistrust. Mistrust is not. Let it rest. Now, Lydio, to you. Mistress, your father parts you leave your lessons and help you to dress your sister's chamber up. Farewell. I must split. Sir Lutencio, this is the day that Kate and Petruchio should be wed. And yet, we not hear from our son-in-law. What says Lutencio to this shame of ours? No shame but mine. I told you, to be noted for a merry man, he'll woo a thousand, point the day of marriage, yet never means to wed where he hath wooed. Now must the world point at poor Catherine and say there is mad Petruchio's wife, if he would come and marry her. Patience. Upon my life, Petruchio means but well, whatever fortune stays him from his word. Would Catherine have never seen him, though? You are welcome, sir. And yet I come not well. Not so well sober, as I wish you were. And tell us, what occasion of import hath all so long detained you from your wife? Tedious as it were, and harsh, to hear. Suffice it I come to keep my word. Signor Grimio, came you from the church? As willingly as I ever came from school. And is the bride and bridegroom coming home? A bridegroom, you say? Tis a groom indeed, a grumbling groom, and that the girl shall find. When the priest should ask if Catherine should be his wife, he swore so loud that all amazed the priest let fall the book. And as he stooped to pick it up, the mad bridegroom took him such a cuff, and down fell the priest and book. What said the wench when he rose again? A health, quoth he, as if he had been aboard, carousing to his mate after a storm, quaffed off the muscadel and threw all the socks in the sexton's face. This done, he took the bride about the neck and kissed her lips with a clamorous smack. Such a mad marriage never was before. I know you think to dine with me today, but here I mean to take my leave. Isn't possible you will away tonight. I must away today before night come. Dine with my father, drink a health to me, for I must haul ass and farewell to you all. Now, if you love me, stay. It may not be. Nay then, the door is open. Go. For me, I'll not be gone till I please. Okay, Perthy, be not angry. I will be angry. What has thou to do? Gentlemen, forward to the bridal dinner. I see a woman may be made a fool if she had not a spirit to resist. Obey the bride, you attend on her. But my Kate, she must with me. He's cruising for a bruise in. What bird dog? That stops my way in Padua. Now, let's blow this popsicle stand.